let's talk about the reflection of sound waves. You're probably quite familiar with the reflection of sound waves, even if you don't know it. An echo is in fact a sound wave that has been reflected. And of course, we'll be learning a little more about that as we go on. Now, it's a basic fact of how waves work that when they go into a different medium, that is, a different thing to propagate through, then they will split into two smaller waves. One wave is reflected back into the same medium. So we can see that for these little beams of light in the photograph, which are of course a type of wave, they come in from the left and some of them get reflected to the top of the image because they stay in the same medium, air. But the other one is transmitted through the prism and we can see that some light comes out of the right of the picture. So some light has been reflected from the prism and some light has been transmitted through it. It turns out that if we take the total amount of energy in the reflected wave and the transmitted wave, it'll add up to the same amount of energy that we started with. This means that we don't get any energy created or destroyed. So if the two media are very similar and there's not much difference between the two media, then most of the wave will just go straight through into the new medium as if nothing had happened. So in this diagram over here, it will be the white part of the wave to the right of the yellow line. So we can see that the wave has just continued straight on through the boundary. But what about this blue reflection? If the two media are very different, then that blue reflection will carry much more energy than the white transmission. If, for example, a sound wave is meeting a solid wall of rock or stone or wood or something, then that medium will be very different to the air that it's been traveling through. So instead of being transmitted into the wall, most of the wave will be reflected from it and produce this series of blue wave fronts. But as I said before, the total amount of energy, if we add up the energy in the reflected wave and in the transmitted wave, is exactly the same as the total amount of energy in the incident wave. That is, the wave that started this whole thing off. So that means that we have three types of waves. We have the incident wave, which is the starting wave that's incident to some sort of barrier. We have the transmitted wave, which, gets, which goes through the barrier and gets transmitted through the new medium. And we have the reflected wave, which gets bounced back into the same medium from which the incident wave came. A boat emits a sonar pulse toward the seabed and reflect, uh, here's the echo, the reflection that is, after a time of t, <laughs> algebra. So calculate the depth of the water if the pulse travels at a speed of v. So we send out a sound pulse that travels at a speed of v, we wait for a bit, and then after t, we receive the reflection. Let's draw a diagram to help us. We have a seabed, we have a boat on top of the water, and we have the sound wave that it's sending down. The sound wave will have to go all the way down, reflect from the seafloor, and then come all the way up before we can receive it. So this round trip of going all the way down and all the way up is what takes T. Remember that we'll be measuring things in SI units most of the time. In this case, we don't need to worry about units because all we have is algebra. But in most certain applications, because the pulse will travel so quickly, we'll be using seconds to measure T. All right, so if it takes half the time to go down and half the time to go back up, then how can we calculate the depth? Well, we only really need one branch of the journey, don't we? So how long does it take for the pulse to get all the way down? We won't worry about coming back. Well, if it's half the journey, then the pulse will take t over two to reach the bottom and t over two to return to the boat. So the time it takes for the wave to travel the depth of the water is t over two. Now all we need is distance equals velocity times time. Distance equals velocity times time, and we have the velocity and we have the time, then the distance should be pretty easy to find, right? It'll just be v, the velocity, times t over two. So this will be the depth of the water. 